Joe here from Infinity of Tacoma. I'm doing a video today. It's been a long time in the making. I've been waiting for the perfect inventory of Teslas to do it. I want to compare all the versions of autopilot all the way up to full self-driving. So there's a lot of differences. There's a lot of information and confusion out there. So I want to kind of shed a little bit in light and uh, kind of tell you the differences between all the different versions of autopilot, enhanced autopilot, and full self-driving available through Tesla over the years. Starting off with this uh, 2018 Tesla mid-range, we have an older version of uh, basically it's just uh, a basic autopilot with uh, safety features. So basically it's uh, adaptive cruise control with like a blind spot alert, forward collision warning, things like that. So it's a very basic version of autopilot. And then we have a uh, 2018 Tesla Long Range Rear Wheel Drive. This has, has a regular version of Autopilot that we can find on pretty much uh, most new Teslas, late model Teslas these days. It's great, wonderful, a very popular system. Here we have a 2016 uh, Tesla Model S 75 Rear Wheel Drive. This has an older version of Autopilot that was uh, offered for a little bit called uh, Highway Autopilot. Over here, we have a uh, 2019 Tesla Model 3 dual motor long range. This one has enhanced autopilot. Lastly, we have a 2019 Tesla Model 3 standard range plus. This is actually my own very vehicle. <laughs> you can tell I'm a big fan of uh, these products. This one has a full self-driving capability, the flagship uh, autonomous software uh, that's still in beta. And uh, hop in uh, with me and let's take some of these for a drive and I'll show you some of the differences. All right, so we're gonna kick off this autopilot video with uh, the most simplest form of autopilot. Earlier Teslas, some of the first Teslas that came out did not really have uh, what we consider autopilot today, which is traffic aware cruise control, which allows the vehicle to brake and accelerate and steer within its own lane. So this one, if we go over to autopilot, oh sorry, this one, when we go over software, we can see we have autopilot safety features. So autopilot safety features means that it has uh, automatic blind spot camera, uh, blind, blind spot collision chime. We have emergency lane departure avoidance, uh, automatic emergency braking, and obstacle aware acceleration. Uh, obstacle aware acceleration. Obstacle aware acceleration automatically limits acceleration and may apply the brakes if a obstacle is detected in front of your vehicle while driving at low speeds. Okay, so basically, it's uh, like uh, you know, a uh, form of uh, cruise control that we find on most other vehicles. Uh, you know, with some safety features. Uh, pretty common, uh, pretty basic. So, autopilot, pretty much after 2019 on most Teslas, was included across the board. You bought a brand new Tesla, 2019 and Ford and uh, autopilot was included at no extra charge. On some of the earlier Teslas, autopilot was actually an uh, extra charge feature, um, mainly on the uh, Model 3 when it first came out uh, for 2017 and 18. And most of the Model 3s, autopilot was about a $3,000 option. Then uh, they had a uh, what we call a Tesla standard range. Uh, the Tesla standard range, uh, I think they offered up until 2020, the Model 3 standard range. Uh, autopilot, uh, as far as I know, was also optional on that, and that was a $3,000 option. So this one uh, could potentially uh, have autopilot. Uh, I would just have to do an in-app purchase. Upgrades. Software upgrades. Then we have autopilot, uh, $3,000. Then uh, enhanced autopilot, $6,000, and full self-driving capability, $15,000. So, uh, if you like autopilot, this Tesla Model 3 mid-range uh, is upgradable to it. Most uh, Model 3s from 2017 and 18 uh, will be able to uh, use autopilot. Pretty much every Model 3 made uh, is capable of operating autopilot. Some of the early Model S's uh, they pretty much are not capable of operating autopilot. So if you have like a 2012, 13, maybe I think 2014, those vintage Teslas, mainly the only Tesla really could buy at the time was the Model S. In those years, they aren't really capable of uh, operating on autopilot. They have pretty basic systems. 
so they're not upgradable. Basically, it's kind of a similar uh, safety cruise control, which this one has. So to operate the cruise control, you just push the stock down, and then you use this wheel right here, and that will set the speed of the cruise control. You can see 40 max. It uh, has a traffic sign recognition. It sees that the speed limit is 30 miles an hour. And you hit the brakes, or you push up on the stock, the right stock to uh, deactivate it. So this will <laughs> be our sh shortest autopilot video because it's the most basic autopilot. Uh, you know, I guess technically speaking, you, it really is an autopilot. It's just uh, adaptive cruise control with uh, some safety features. But you know, that's pretty comparable uh, to other vehicles that compete with the Model 3. Um, you know, even though this might be the most basic form of a Tesla, uh, as far as software goes, uh, it's still up to speed and, uh, you know, superior and more safe than a lot of other systems on competing vehicles. And you know, not everyone is crazy about autopilot. I have a Tesla with full self-driving. Uh, me and my wife, uh, you know, share it. You know, we have other vehicles, but we take turns driving it. She drives with me, you know, using the autopilot, the full self-driving, but she loves a Tesla, but she's a kind of a control freak. She's really not on board with even using autopilot. Uh, she likes to be in complete control of the vehicle. She doesn't like the idea of the vehicle braking and accelerating for her or uh, steering for her. So she loves a Tesla. I mean, she is absolutely smitten with it, but she's just happy to <laughs> drive it herself, even on the highway. Maybe one day I can get her to try using the autopilot, but she's pretty, she's not really interested in using it. She can see what it can do. She sees me use it all the time and she has no interest. So I think uh, someone, you know, who potentially really is not interested in those autopilot features, a Tesla like this is, uh, will be more than perfect for them. So we're gonna get into it with our first uh, real autopilot system. The, the autopilot safety features really is an autopilot. Autopilot is an amazing system. It's traffic work cruise control which allows the vehicle to brake and accelerate in its own lane. Uh, Tesla is constantly improving and updating its autopilot system. A lot of uh, press uh, and you know news and stuff goes uh, towards uh, full self-driving, also known as FSB, FSD capability. But autopilot is really uh, you know the secret sauce for Tesla. Uh, pretty much every uh, Tesla after 2019, except for the standard range, uh, Model 3. Uh, the Standard Range Plus does have it included. Uh, autopilot is uh, included. So almost every Tesla after 2019 is equipped with autopilot. Um, so there's two aspects to the autopilot system. Uh, there's the uh, adaptive cruise control and then there's the auto steer. You have this stock right here which is also your gear selector. You use this stock also while the vehicle is moving to operate uh, the autopilot. And there's another number of ways to shut the autopilot off. So I have the autopilot on. Uh, you can tell it's on because the steering wheel is highlighted in blue. It does require me to keep my hands in the wheel. There's actually a sensor right here where you can uh, squeeze it or you can kind of jiggle the wheel a little bit and that's just communicating to, the, communicating to the car that I'm still paying attention. I have my hand in the wheel uh, because the system works great but it does not work perfectly. Sometimes there's events where the, the system get con confused certain situations where you need to take over uh, to prevent something from happening. Most of the time it works great. In fact, statistically talking, uh, vehicles operating on autopilot average about one accident for every four million miles driven. Uh, so it's actually safer than a human. Humans, I think, average about one accident for every 500,000 miles driven. Uh, so it's a very safe system if you used it properly. It's great for stop and go traffic. I haven't shut the system off. You do have to understand that autopilot does have uh, limitations. Um, it will stop for vehicles in front of me, but if there wasn't a vehicle in front of me, it's not going to stop for red lights, it's not going to stop for stop signs. Uh, it can steer in its own lane, but when you get to really sharp turns, it's going to have a hard time, especially if you're going too fast. Uh, you can slow the vehicle down for sharp corners if you're using autopilot on roads uh, with sharp corners. Um, but mainly this system is designed to be used on highways or for roads like this, uh, where there's not sharp turns, it's mainly you know stop and go traffic, pretty simple stuff. And it works great. It's absolute godsend if you have to drive in traffic. Uh, if you have to drive on the highway, autopilot, to me, is a must have. 
Uh, when I have to run an errand for a dealership, I can pretty much take any vehicle I want. Uh, almost always I will take a Tesla of autopilot just because it's uh, the least work to drive. I'm the most comfortable with it. That's just how it is. So for the most part, you know, you put autopilot on, it's doing the work for you. I'm just in supervisor mode. I can relax a little bit because, you know, the car is doing the work for me. I'm not driving. Um, and it does relieve a layer of stress and, you know, frees up my mind a little bit. You can kind of look around, you know, be semi-distracted a little bit, but you do have to uh, take control. So we're coming up to a rotary. The vehicle is not going to be able to handle the rotary, so I'm going to shut the system off. There's a few different ways to shut the autopilot off. You can put your foot on the brake. If you put your foot in the brake, that will completely shut the system off. You heard that little uh, tone, and that tone is indicating that the uh, that just went off is indicating that the autopilot just got shut off. And to put it on, there's two elements. So you push the stock down once, and that operates the adaptive cruise control. So we're at 28 miles an hour, and it's at 28 miles an hour. So it's I'm still going to steer, but it's handling the braking acceleration. And you use a scroll wheel right here to adjust the speed. Um, you can adjust it pretty easily and the vehicle will brake and accelerate uh, based, I mean, uh, on uh, the speeds that you set it at. Alright, we're coming to a light up here. I'm putting my foot in the brake and you can just hear that the autopilot got shut off. To activate the auto steer, you just go one step further. Instead of pushing the stock down once, you push it down twice. And now the autopilot is on. So the adaptive cruise control is on and the auto steer is on. You can tell because the steering wheel is highlighted in blue. Uh, but you can shut it off by pushing the stock up. It is off. Or you can turn it off by pushing your foot in the brake. You can also take over the steer steering by just taking control of the steering wheel. It doesn't take much pressure to, um, you know, take control of the steering. It's not designed to rip the steering wheel out of your hands. It's actually designed for you easily to take control of the steering uh, because if a situation does come up uh, where you need to take control, they don't want to inhibit that. But there are things that you need to understand that can be confusing. I still get thrown off every once in a while this with my Tesla. For instance, I just shut off the auto steer, but guess what? The adaptive cruise control is still on. The steering wheel is not highlighted in blue, but you can see here it's the adaptive cruise control is still on, but sometimes people get confused and if you don't realize the adaptive cruise control is still on, you can get caught off guard when the vehicle starts accelerating. But it's fairly easy, you put your foot in the brake, you put, pull the shift off like that, and that will shut off the adaptive cruise control. Love these blind spot cameras. This was actually an update uh, for Christmas time last year, about a year ago. And that's the amazing thing about the over there updates. Tesla is constantly having over there updates improving, adding functionality to the vehicle, improving and making autopilot safer. Uh, well, this is, a, you know, these cars have been out since 2017. The Model 3 has been out since 2017. But, uh, you know, in December of 2021, they did an update and they realized, hey, we can activate uh, these uh, side cameras on the fender and then you have a blind spot camera. You really can't do that in any other vehicle. The reason why you can do it with a Tesla is kind of like, a, it's, like a, it's like a smartphone on wheels. The majority of the functionality is handled by the computers in this screen. It's not tied to fixed buttons here and there, so it's infinitely configurable. They can constantly update it. It's one of the few cars that you can buy where it improves and gains features. There's another uh, recent update. You hear that chime? That was another recent update a couple months ago. When you have a green light, sometimes I don't see when the light turns green, it gets a little chime letting you know the light turned green. Okay, so we're gonna activate the uh, autopilot. I'm gonna set it for five miles over, 35 miles an hour. Uh, even though autopilot is mainly designed to be used on main roads, you can see this is just a two lane road and uh, it's working great. We're doing, uh, we're coming up to some corners here. It will be able to handle these corners without too much issue, but there is a uh, sharper corner coming up where it would be too much for the autopilot system. You can also see that the light is turning red, so I have to hit the brakes to shut the autopilot off. So now we're starting to see some limitations to the uh, autopilot system. Uh, and you'll notice uh, some of the limitations to the autopilot system, especially compared to the full self-driving. 
when we start testing that vehicle. All right, so we're, the speed limit is 40. We're coming up to this hairpin corner and you can see that the vehicle is trying to take this corner a little too fast and that it handled it. Maybe if the corner was a little bit sharper, I would have had to take control, but that was really kind of pushing the limits of the auto steer with the autopilot system. And here we are at Days of Milton. You can see uh, the system works pretty awesome. Uh, it's a great system for stop and go traffic. And uh, it's amazing. Uh, I have a Tesla with full self driving. As much as I like the full self driving, uh, it does, it's not perfect. I would be more than happy to have a Tesla of autopilot. I use autopilot all the time. Obviously enhanced autopilot and full self driving have some big perks, but like I said, uh, the uh, autopilot works just fine and I'd be happy uh, driving with autopilot. It would make my life so much more easier versus a vehicle without it. Okay, so now we are in a 2016 Tesla Model S. So for a little while, uh, autopilot was a little bit extra special for the Model S and the Model X. Uh, so uh, for a little while, they offered uh, highway autopilot. Uh, so highway autopilot uh, does give you some elements of enhanced autopilot. You have a summon, which allows you to roll the vehicle forward uh, for uh, easy access to the vehicle. Maybe if it's in a tight parking spot or in your garage, you can pull it out for you. Obviously you have to monitor the vehicle, you control it with your phone. And then uh, we have uh, auto lane change. So if you put your turn signal on, it will change lanes on the highway. So let's check those systems out. Then also, uh, with the highway autopilot, uh, I have also noticed that it will actually uh, slow the vehicle down on some certain corners, which you don't really get with the regular autopilot. So the Model S and the Model X, uh, they're premium models, so it does make sense where uh, Tesla was giving some of these enhanced features. Uh, but pretty much as I noticed, uh, I think 2018, 2019 going forward, with the Model S and X, autopilot is just regular autopilot and then you have the opportunity to, to upgrade to enhanced autopilot or full self-driving. To activate the autopilot on the uh, older S and X, it's a little bit different with the newer one. You have uh, a stock right here and you pull it towards you once to activate the adaptive cruise control and twice to activate uh, the autopilot. And then you can press up or you can press down uh, to control the speed. And just to talk a little bit about the amazingness of the autopilot updates, this is a vehicle that came out in 2016. It's using a computer and infotainment system that's older. It's uh, pretty close to 2023. Yet, with the ability to do over there updates, they uh, are, are not able to offer all a lot of the improvements uh, and features and updates that you have on the newer Tesla models, you can also take advantage of that with this older Tesla. And that's the amazingness of the Tesla over their updates. Even though this is an older vehicle, uh, it, ha it still keeps on improving and gets better with age. Just like you might have a two or three, four year old iPhone. Well, even though it's not a brand new iPhone, it can still you know, run most of the uh, apps. It can uh, you know, run the newest version of iOS. <laughs> Uh, all the you know new features that Apple usually offers with their iPhone updates, you can usually take advantage of those and use most of those on an older iPhone. Same kind of deal with a Tesla. Okay, so we're gonna uh, we're activated the autopilot, the highway autopilot. You can see the steering wheel is in blue, even though I have my uh, hand on the wheel. Uh, the vehicle is steering; it is braking, and accelerating. And uh, those long highway tracks is one big advantage of a Tesla. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of mental energy just to keep the vehicle centered in its lane on the highway. You wouldn't expect, especially in rainy, inclement conditions, poor visibility. I can definitely detect a higher level of stress when I have to you know, handle the driving in situations like this on the highway. But for me now, the Tesla is handling the work. I'm just in supervisor mode. The whole level of stress has uh, melted away. So I'm going to put the turn signal on. And you can see with the highway autopilot, I put the turn signal on and it moves over into the next lane. So that's one of the advantages of the highway autopilot because if I have regular autopilot, 
for me to change lanes, I would have to disengage the autopilot to change lanes and re-engage uh, it again. Not a huge deal, but for some people, it's just nice not having, that's one less thing you have to do. And it's nice, you know, you put your turn signal on, the vehicle is going to make sure that, you know, obviously you should check too, but make sure that there, there's no vehicles in your blind spot, uh, and it just moves right over for you. So, you know, sometimes changing lanes on the highway can be stressful. Usually I'm looking, double looking, making sure no one's around, but the Tesla has uh, sensors and cameras all around it. It can see everything, and uh, it can very easily change lanes, as you can see. So let's put the autopilot on. It's set for 65 miles an hour. We have a 40 mile an hour on ramp coming along. And it is taking it way too fast. So the highway autopilot I had to take over is definitely handling this corner a little bit too fast. Uh, I had, the highway speed was 65. Um, it might have been able to take it, but it was just a little bit too dangerous. So we're we're starting to come into the limitations of the uh, highway autopilot. All right, and up here we have a decreasing radius corner, a very difficult you know situation for a system like autopilot. Uh, instead of 55 miles an hour, it's a 25 mile an hour corner. But look at this: the system is actually slowing down for this corner. Where it didn't quite slow down for that other corner, it does see a turn coming up here. And it's, it's set at 55 and it's slowed down. And it's actually doing a pretty good job staying in the lane. And mind you, this is not an enhanced autopilot. This is not full self-driving. This is an older version of autopilot all the way back to 2016, where we're, you know, it's pretty close to 2023. All right. So now we are in a 2019 uh, Tesla Model 3. Uh, dual motor long range and this one uh, actually has full self-driving capability uh, so the thing right now full self-driving capability is that we just purchased this unit and for me uh, and things are always changing so this is as of uh, December 2022 things could be different in the future so right now if I wanted to access the full self-driving capability on this Tesla Tesla wants me to uh, safely drive for 100 miles just on regular autopilot to show that you know I'm not an idiot and I don't uh, misuse the system, <laughs> which is probably smart. Um, so basically, for me to use the full self-driving in this particular Tesla, I would need to do that. Obviously, I'm not going to drive 100 miles just to unlock it. Uh, so I have uh, the uh, I have the uh, system set up on this one to act just like a regular enhanced autopilot. So an autopilot uh, was offered a little while ago, then it was uh, discontinued and Tesla just brought it back. So enhanced autopilot right now, and this is, it could be different in the future, but as of December 2022, enhanced autopilot is uh, $6,000. Uh, so with enhanced autopilot, uh, what that gives you, uh, you get uh, a, a feature called navigate on autopilot. So what enhanced autopilot allows the vehicle to do, it basically allows the vehicle to drive itself on the highway from the on-ramp all the way to the off-ramp. Uh, so it will change lanes automatically. It will move the flow of traffic. Uh, the nice thing about enhanced autopilot is uh, maybe if another lane happens to be moving faster, the car can say, hey, this lane is moving fast. That lane's moving faster. We're in a slower lane. It will change lanes uh, to a faster lane. So it's a great feature. Uh, you also have a smart summon which is kind of still in beta, but Smart Summon basically allows the vehicle to pull out of its parking spot and drive in a parking lot and drive to you. Um, it works really slow. I, I'd say at this point, it's kind of more of a parlor trick to show off to your friends an actual functional thing. But I think, uh, you know, they're updating it. It's a system still in beta. So I think, you know, hopefully in a couple years, it will very seamlessly be able to pick you up like at the entrance of the mall or something like that, which would be great. And then uh, you have, uh, you know, basically park assist where it can self park. So you hit a button and the vehicle will uh, park itself in a parking spot. I'm pretty sure it's perpendicular or parallel. Uh, for those of you that really uh, cringe at parking, it's not a comfortable thing for you. That system like that works great. 
some people do complain that the uh, auto park is a little bit sl slow uh, versus their own parking but I guess that depends on your parking skills but maybe if we have a chance we'll have uh, we'll try to test that system out as well so with the navigate on auto, uh, autopilot and the auto lane changes a couple different settings uh, you can set it up that will just arbitrarily decide to change lanes on its own sometimes it can uh, catch people off guard what I have to do is I actually uh, ask it make it check with me before it changes lanes and it'll just say hey you know either put your turn signal on or hit a button and it will change lane automatically all right I have the navigate on autopilot uh, engaged um, I'm gonna navigate us back to our dealership and let's see how it performs so this car is being a little bit too slow uh, it's not asking me to change lanes but I'm just gonna put the turn signal on and you can see it's uh, changing lanes and then off we go now take the interstate 5 north exit on the right so before it was trying to take this corner way too fast with the highway autopilot but you can see even though the autopilot says set at 65 miles an hour 500 feet take the interstate you can see that other car was trying to take this go uh, with the uh, highway autopilot was trying to take this corner too fast but this can see it's a slower corner and it uh, having no issues slowing down uh, taking the, this corner at a safe speed and it's also asking me to uh, change lanes over into this lane which I will do So the nice thing about the enhanced autopilot is that I went from uh, one highway to an off-ramp uh, to get on another highway and the on-ramp and so that I didn't really have to deactivate the system, I was able to handle it on its own. Where if I had a regular autopilot system or a highway autopilot system, I would have had to disable the system and able to uh, make some of those uh, you know, maneuvers. So clearly enhanced autopilot is definitely a uh, big perk uh, for someone who drives a lot on the highway, uh, especially if you're uncomfortable changing lanes. You can see this uh, thing has a view around it. If there's a car in your blind spot, you can very clearly see it's in your blind spot. And here is our off-ramp coming up over here. Uh, put the signal on and it says hey telling me to <laughs> navigate and autopilot is now over so you can see it uh, took me to the off-ramp and it disengaged all right and I just had to hit the board brakes because with enhanced autopilot it does not have a traffic sign or stop sign recognition This one does have full self-driving, so even if you're not using the full self-driving beta, you actually can turn on the stop sign and traffic sign recognition for a full self-driving equipped Tesla, even though it's not operating the full self-driving software. All right, for the grand finale, we have this Tesla with full self-driving capability. This is actually my own Tesla. Um, so to use full self-driving capability, they've actually made it a lot easier. When I first got this car, it actually monitored my driving for 30 days. I had to drive really uh, conservatively. Um, so I saw how fast I accelerated, how, how closely I followed people on the road, how fast I took corners. And if I did that stuff <laughs> uh, too aggressively, it would not allow me to use FSD. So basically, uh, I had to monitor my driving for a month and then I was allowed into full self-driving beta. But now they've had an update come out. So basically this applies to everyone in North America uh, with full self-driving. Now you don't have to go through quite as much of that stuff to use the full self-driving capability. Uh, basically they just require you uh, to drive your car safely on autopilot for 100 miles and then they'll allow you to access the full self-driving beta. And beta is key because uh, uh, even though the system is amazing, it is in beta, so they still require you to keep your hand in the wheel and pay attention because uh, it's like a 14 or 15 year old kid driving. For the most part, it does okay, but in the complex situations, it's just too much for the system and uh, you have to take control. 
but I can tell you just over the last couple months of me having this system uh, I've had a few updates and every time they update it it gets a little bit better a little bit better and uh, it's actually quite remarkable uh, just uh, how much I've seen it change and improve at the little time I've had it so I think it's reasonable to believe that if it keeps on progressing and improving at the rate as it does that eventually they will be able to achieve a full self-driving where the car can do everything on its own you won't need to pay attention you can read a book take a nap Maybe you can even be drunk and it, you can be in the back seat and it can drive you home without worrying about getting a DUI. You can also see when operating the full self-driving software, the display is a little bit different. This is what we call the mind of a Tesla. So this is everything uh, that the Tesla sees with cameras around it. All right, so we're gonna operate the full self-driving and we're gonna navigate to uh, a restaurant up the street. So basically at this point, uh, from what I've heard, I don't know if this is exactly true, this is uh, just from memory, uh, I think that right now the the full self-driving computer in this Tesla, it's about able to track and monitor about 26 objects simultaneously. Any more than that uh, just is a little bit too much for the computer to handle, which is quite amazing. But that being said, probably uh, for this to be fully autonomous, it will probably need one more uh, hardware upgrade uh, or possibly another upgrade on the cameras generally uh, Tesla has uh, done those upgrades at no extra cost or for a very nominal cost for people that do have the full self-driving capability that's kind of one of the uh, unspoken deals is that you know those who you know participated and bought the system early on they you know get updates and improvements be it uh, software or hardware and uh, other thing I'd like to mention about autopilot and full self-driving is uh, as far as um, control goes, uh, it does actually let, allow you to hit the throttle and accelerate rate while autopilot or full self-driving is engaged. I can hit the throttle a little bit just to help the car along. Sometimes there's a little bit too much space. I don't want to noise someone behind me. So you'll allow you to creep the car forward a little bit uh, without disengaging it. Likewise. Um, sometimes the systems are limited to a certain speed limit. You can actually override it and hit the accelerator and get it to go faster uh, than the speed limits are, it's restricted at without disengaging the system. And you can see here we're at a pretty busy intersection. There's a lot going on, but the car is tracking a lot of stuff. You can see that there's a person standing there. You, know, you can see the cars uh, making left-hand turns. In certain aspects, it can actually see things with the cameras all around it that I can't see. You can see that uh, the autopilot or full self-driving is engaged and I'm just hitting the throttle a little bit and you can see you can creep the car a little bit forward without disengaging it, which is nice. Sometimes too, uh, it's nice to hit the throttle because sometimes it might be thinking too much when making a turn, there might be people behind you. So you can, if you can clearly see that there's no cars coming, you can kind of push the throttle and encourage the car to move. Okay, go, it's safe and the, the car will go and continue on with driving without disengaging the system. Um, the system has gotten a lot better about making turns. Uh, you know, in some situations, if there is traffic behind you and it's waiting too long to you know, make a right or left-hand turn, people behind you can get annoyed, so sometimes it's nice to be able to you know, hit the throttle and just let the car know, hey, it's okay, go without you know, annoying people behind you. <laughs> So we're getting to a little bit more complex driving situations as you can see in the car with well, the full self driving is doing a great job uh, it's smooth uh, the lane changes and maneuvers are more human like uh, on some of the early versions of full self driving things were a little bit more abrupt they're not quite as smooth a little bit more jerky and that's just you know the improvements of the system um, you know there's maybe a hundred plus thousand people right now operating the full self-driving software on Tesla's and um, Tesla is mo using all that data all those people driving operating that software and they're using that data to improve the system in fact they have a supercomputer uh, which 
basically uh, runs a, uh, a, com a computer, you know, the, the similar brain that's in this, a similar full self-driving computer, and it can basically do simulated events over and over again, and it can train the system. So it can create a simulated world uh, for the autonomous software to operate in, and, uh, you know, and, and get better that way. So, I mean, it's quite amazing what they're doing with uh, machine learning. So Tesla has millions and millions of miles of full self-driving data. I don't know if anyone else has that much data for autonomous driving. And Tesla's approach to autonomous driving is a little bit different. Tesla is just using pure vision. They're just using the cameras in the vehicle to see everything. This has cameras all around it. You know, we operate with cameras ourselves. We have two cameras and we're able to drive trucks, motorcycles, fly airplanes, do a lot of complex things with just two cam cameras. So reasoning on Tesla's part is, if a vehicle has cameras all around it, then it should be able to handle most driving situations. Or all driving situations autonomously. And um, a lot of the competing autonomous driving companies they're using a system called lidar and lidar has advantages and it has disadvantages uh, lidar is a lot more expensive uh, you know some of the other autonomous companies uh, like waymo and cruise they have expensive uh, lidar units on top of the vehicles to operate the software tesla doesn't have any of that stuff uh, pretty much every Tesla made after 2019 is equipped with a full self-driving computer. Uh, so basically it just needs a software update and it can virtually be autonomous. So a lot of these other cars, they have expensive LiDAR sensors. They have to operate in a geofence location that's pre-mapped out. A Tesla, the whole idea is you can plop this anywhere and it will be able to drive itself. So it's a very different approach than the other companies. Uh, maybe it's a little bit more ambitious, but if Tesla can achieve this goal, they can achieve uh, autonomy. They can achieve a full self-driving at a much, much lower cost than everyone else. And there's already a million Teslas on the road, which can just get a software update and all of a sudden they're full self-driving. I don't think any other auto manufacturer is in a position like that. So a pretty non-dramatic drive. <laughs> Here we are at Dave's and Milton. It drove me from infinity of Tacoma. It was about seven miles. No interventions. No having to help it. It took us right to the restaurant and now it has stopped. <laughs> Pretty amazing. And uh, I just got a full self-driving update a couple of weeks ago and just off that update, it is a very, very noticeable difference. A very large improvement in the function of this system. And I can only imagine in a month or so when I get another update to my full self-driving system, it shall be even better. And potentially a couple of years down the road, I'm hoping that maybe this vehicle can be a robo taxi for me. So maybe while I'm at work, this car can be out being an Uber for me, making money and helping <laughs> uh, recapture some of my uh, you know, monthly payment I make on this thing. Uh, and then maybe when the vehicle's pull, you know, paid off, then I have an asset. It's like having a, a, an investment property. It can go. It's like having a you know an Airbnb or something. But you know instead of having this, this pay half a million dollars for a house, you have a you know fifty thousand dollar car, forty fifty thousand dollar car that can drive itself. Uh, drive you it can maybe park itself do some amazing things all right so now we're gonna head back to the dealership And we're going to give it one more test. <laughs> this is the hardest test of all. This is the one instance where the system still has issues and we have a, a rotary uh, with lots of traffic, two lanes, 
Um, and uh, generally, maybe one out of 20 times I can get the car with the full self-driving to get through the rotary uh, without too much drama. So we'll see how it does. the full self-driving a couple months ago when I was able to use it I have a 10 mile commute you know to work and back home and usually I'd have to intervene one two three four times to you know take over uh, just because the system got overwhelmed something happened but now after having two or three updates uh, I can now use a full self-driving to drive me to work or drive me home and uh, hardly any interventions at all maybe one or two if any so the system is definitely improving uh, incrementally but very noticeably and um, it's uh, very remarkable in my opinion you know what a car can do basically this is like a semi sentient uh, animal <laughs> or maybe an insect but you know Tesla headquarters is not beaming information telling us what to do this vehicle has a full self-driving computer, it has a computer brain, and it's reacting to the world around it, and it's navigating through an ever-changing world, and moving through it, making decisions on its own. And that, to me, is very remarkable. In fact, Tesla is talking about having a Tesla bot, a humanoid robot, but in a lot of ways, this is a Tesla bot. It's a robot, but instead of having legs, it's in four wheels, but this is doing robotic stuff. It's thinking, it's making decisions, it's moving through a world of uh, other vehicles driven by people. In much a way, I think most people would not think that this vehicle is driving itself. They just assume that I'm driving it. So here we are into this rotary and uh, we have a decent amount of traffic. And it's starting to hit the brakes and get confused, so I'm just going to hit the accelerator. I'm just about bumping the accelerator uh, just to encourage it to get through. So I haven't, uh, I haven't uh, deactivated the system. I'm just hitting the accelerator because it's getting a little bit uh, <laughs> unsure of itself. And uh, it managed to make it through the rotary with a little bit of assistance for me, but I didn't have to uh, disengage the, uh, the uh, full self-driving. And pretty much after that, it's just a straight shot to work. Um, so, as you can see, the full self-driving is not perfect. It's not uh, to the point where, uh, you know, I cannot pay attention, close my eyes, take a nap, do things on its own. But it is uh, doing a very good job driving on its own. <laughs> like I said, you know, probably just as good as a 14 or 15 year old, you know, human kid, 16 year old human kid who's just learning to drive or is driven a teeny bit and kind of learning the ropes obviously full self-driving isn't for anybody um, you know I tell people uh, most people at work that ask for full self-driving I'm like do you really want full self-driving do you know what it is maybe you think you want full self-driving but maybe you really just want autopilot or enhanced autopilot um, I think at this point full self-driving is still kind of more for the nerdier kind of people like want to push the envelope uh, as far as you know technology goes if that's fun for you uh, definitely check it out but if you're kind of more <laughs> not looking to push the envelope as far as you know driving technology goes I think you know enhanced autopilot or just regular autopilot is awesome I would happily drive a Tesla for years with just a regular autopilot and that would make my life ten times better than a car with just regular cruise control uh, like I said if I have to drive any vehicle, uh, any <laughs> amount of distance, more than a couple miles, if I have to go on a highway, do some errands for work, nine times out of ten, almost ten times out of ten, I'm taking a Tesla with autopilot. It's comfortable. Uh, it's relaxing for me. I'm not a big fan. I like driving, but I like driving on beautiful, empty roads with beautiful scenery and no other cars. Driving in this chaos of all these people and stuff and stop and go traffic is pretty much torturous to me so to have a vehicle to take that workload off of me and i can just sit here 
enjoy my music, sip a cup of coffee, look around a little bit. I can't tell you how much that makes me happy.